Hello book lovers and welcome to Book Talk Radio Club. My name is Claire Perkins and today I'm talking to Kathy Lindert. Kathy is the author of Quit Smoking Without Gaining Weight Using Visualisation, Hypnosis and Other Cool Tricks. Kathy has used the methods in her book to help thousands of others quit smoking without packing on the pounds. She's a member of the National Guild of Hypnotists. Hi, Cathy. First of all, welcome and thank you for coming on Book Talk Radio Club. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Quit smoking without gaining weight. Why do people tend to gain weight when giving up cigarettes? Well, a lot of times people are looking for something that's going to fill a need. And cigarettes are what people consider their friend. So when they are sad or lonely, happy aggravated and frustrated, need to take a break, they do something with their hands and their mouth. Mm -hmm. So what they do is they start substituting food for the cigarette. Mm -hmm. And that's why a lot of people will put on the pounds. It's a, kind of, doing it's a kind of a comfort thing, really, isn't it? Yes, it's a comfort. It's A lot of people use cigarettes as their friend, as a way of being comforted. So when people quit smoking, they become very emotional because they feel like they're giving up their best friend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know that one. <laughs> I know that one. <laughs> I, I think giving up smoking is one of the hardest things to do. And I've tried a number of times, and it's withdrawal symptoms that give me so much grief each and every time. What was the main reason that you quit, Kathy? Well, I quit in 1987 because my husband who was my fiancé at the time, would not marry me. True story. He, his father had died of leukemia, mm -hmm. and he said he did not want to see another one that he loved die that terrible death. So it was Tim or cigarettes. And I did have to think. I, I really was like, do you want me to give up cigarettes? <laughs> and, <laughs> and smokers get that. They understand that. And so I did give up cigarettes, and I ended up using hypnosis um, through a cassette. So I'm showing my age. And <laughs> I, I, <laughs> sometimes when I talk to younger people, they're like, what's a cassette? What's a cassette, yeah. <laughs> what's a cassette? Uh, and so I listened to it for about three nights in a row, and then I was, I didn't want a cigarette. And... I will let you know that I, I was about a pack, of, probably a little bit over a pack a day. I was, uh, at that time, an ex-mortgage banker, mm. or I was a mortgage banker. I'm now an ex-mortgage banker. So I had a very high-stress job. Everyone in my office smoked. It was amazing how I quit, and really, with the tools and techniques, I didn't miss it. But uh, it's funny you say that, because I was going to say, you stopped smoking back in 1987. Do you ever find yourself wanting a cigarette? I was going to ask you that question. No, not even not even a little bit. Oh. Um, in fact, I, I find that the cigarette smoke is really disgusting. Yes. I don't like it, and my, my ex-smokers all say the same thing. They can't stand the smell. They... When they smell a person that's walked by them, that stale cigarette smell, mm. it makes them nauseous. Yeah, it, it, it is horrible. But the funny thing is, when I quit, as I said, I tried a few times, I did quit for a year or two, and I still wandered around trying to sniff smoke. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like an aphrodisiac. Can I go outside and someone was smoking? I go, oh, what a lovely smell. <laughs> People must have been like, who is this lady? Yeah. What is she doing? Definitely weird. Definitely yeah. weird. So tell me, mm -hmm. why did you decide to write Quit Smoking Without Gaining Weight? So many of the, most of the times it's the, the women that come in uh, that want to stop smoking. But they will say to me, if I start gaining weight, I will go back to smoking. Mm. And, and it always floors me because I'm thinking, well, you're going to die a very painful death if you continue to smoke. Because most of the times they have issues, whether it's the beginning of COPD, mm. emphysema, bronchitis. I mean, they're sick, heart disease. So when they come in and they, they're warned by their doctor, they don't care because they're, they're saying to themselves, but if I put on 10 or 15 pounds, I'd rather go back to, you know, smoking. So what I did was I said, okay, let's come up with a program where you get the benefit of both worlds. 
where you won't put on weight because we're going to give you techniques that are going to show you that you can handle the stress and the tension, the fears, the loneliness, the whatever is your excuse, riding in the car, having a cup of coffee, all those things, and still be a non-smoker. So you're feeling good about yourself both ways. Mm. And that's what, what I started to do. I noticed that the second chapter of your book is titled The Benefits of Smoking. There are benefits? <laughs> no. <laughs> that, in the chapter, it tells you absolutely nothing because there are no benefits. When people come to see me, I say, well, why do you want to quit smoking? And a lot of the times it's because they're afraid they're going to miss out on their children's you know, future. Mm. Their doctor has scared them. They know that people have died or relative has just died of lung cancer or some kind of cancer. Mm. And I said, well, what is it that you like about cigarettes? Why do you want to smoke? And most of the times there's, I, I don't really like it. It's just a habit. So I put it in the book because sometimes people will say to me, well, I, I like to smoke. Why? Well, it gives me a freedom. What kind of freedom does it give you? Well, I can leave my office and take a 15-minute break. You could do the same thing <laughs> by just walking outside. That's so true. But the funny thing uh, is, um, when I've done temp work and I, I, I haven't smoked, I felt guilty about going outside for 15 minutes. Right, exactly. <laughs> so when funny. people are in a job for a long time, it's acceptable, like everybody, and it's really becoming more and more unacceptable here in the United States, where, where the non-smokers are complaining, saying, well, the smokers are getting an extra hour break. Mm. We want our break, too. So <laughs> now the smokers are like, uh-oh, what do I do? Mm. So, so that's why I put it in there, because people have to realize there really isn't a benefit. If you're using it just to escape, let me teach you how to escape a little healthier. <laughs> That's really it. I'm, I'm definitely going to be reading your book, most definitely. So <laughs> <laughs> you're a member of the National Guild of Hypnotists. How does hypnotism work, especially when it comes to quitting smoking? Well, hypnosis is just a really nice, relaxed state of mind. Um, I do what we call more of the medical hypnosis, meaning I don't do stage there's no barking or quacking or, you know, <laughs> I don't do any of that, right? So I what don't see why not. That would be quite fun. <laughs> Instead of grabbing for a cigarette, you start quacking. I think it would be very entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure that some people would find it funny, but others, I, it, it's funny when they, when they meet me and people will start talking to me and then they'll say, what do you do? And I go, I'm a hypnotist. So they'll stop looking at me like... <laughs> And I'll say, if I was going to hypnotize you, you would have already been hypnotized. <laughs> so uh, so what, what hypnosis does is really it just relaxes the conscious mind and it brings forward the subconscious mind. Because if you look at your mind, your conscious mind is the part of the brain that takes in your learning. But it's also the part of the brain that says, you can't do this. Yes, I can. So you're fighting with that conscious part of your brain. You. The subconscious you're right. But the subconscious part of your brain is always like your magic genie. And it says, okay, your wish is my command. So when we relax and we feel comfortable and I have music playing and we have, you know, a, a good voice myself, you know, or even yourself if you wanted to do it, you just start relaxing. And when you're relaxed and you feel that comfort and trust, then the subconscious mind goes, wait, this feels great. Okay. And that's why hypnosis works so quickly. Right. Um, and you had even mentioned that, you know, that there are times that you have withdrawal symptoms. Most of the times it's three days because the tar and nicotine is what we're fighting, but the nicotine gets out of your body in three days. So the rest of it is just mental. Oh, it's emotional thinking. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. But obviously there are huge benefits to quit smoking um, but using hypnotherapy. But are there any dangers when it comes to this method? No. You can't get stuck in hypnosis. Hypnosis can't make you do something that you don't want to do. Um, 
morally and ethically, if you didn't want to stop smoking, or even if you, some people say, well, you know, uh, what if you say something that I don't like? You won't do it because if it's against your moral or ethical beliefs, you're not going to do it. Mm. So there really is nothing that is harmful for hypnosis. My clients, my past clients loved what experiences they went through. And not only that, when you start learning how to relax your body through hypnosis, you can do it yourself. So people have called me and said, I'm sleeping better. I feel better. My attitude has changed. So if you look at hypnosis like a meditation, they're very similar. Right. But, but hypnosis, I just put in the new behaviors. We take out the old behaviors and put in the new behaviors. And that's really it. You, you teach other hypnotists at HypnoThoughts. What's HypnoThoughts? HypnoThoughts is a, a, one of the other communities. There's, there's a couple of communities of hypnotists. And HypnoThoughts is another great community where hypnosis hypnotists get together and teach each other whether it's hypnosis or script writing or I had taught um, a little bit about book writing for weight loss and helping people and showing them how writing these books is really going to be beneficial to mm. larger audience. So there's a lot of great benefits. Um, and it's, it's just working with other people. If I have a problem or if I have a client I've never worked with, I can go online to HypnoThoughts or to the National Guild okay. and email them and say, this is what I'm facing. What would you suggest? And then hundreds of people will say, here, try this, do this, da, da, da. Mm -hmm. And it's a wonderful resource. So it's a community. It's a community. Yes. I have to ask, how does one become a hypnotist? Well, what kind of training is involved? I went through through quite a few different classes. So the first one that I did was in New Jersey, and it was uh, about 100 hours, and then I added on another 20. Um, and you really, yeah, that's where it's the National Guild of Hypnotists comes in because they, they have booklets, they have criteria, they have different things that tell you what to deal with, how to be professional. And then I also went for pediatric pain and a couple of others, and I'm a certified instructor. Right. Uh, so it's it depends on how many hours, but the the minimum amount of hours for training is a hundred. I probably have done close to four hundred hours in training. So you're a good hypnotist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I always love to learn. And if somebody says that they've got something that can help. And another person, even if it's one client of mine, mm. I, I would love to know it. I've heard it said that one can only be hypnotized if one wants to be. Is that true? That is absolutely true. Right. If you don't want to be hypnotized, it's you not, will not be hypnotized. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Just not going to happen. It's like you're closing the door, you have the bolts on, the lock, the keys, mm. everything. You walk away and nothing will happen. So apart from hypnotism, your book also offers visualization and other core tricks to quit smoking. We'll get to the core tricks in a moment. But first, I love creative visualization. I've used it many times and it works for me. I see myself laying on a beach with the sun on my face, the wind in my hair, a large margarita by my side. And I immediately start seeing myself light up because I associate smoking with relaxation and pleasure. Right. <laughs> So when you would do that visualization, instead I would have you go to your beach with the sun on your face, the wind in your hair, your large margarita by your side, <laughs> and breathing better, meditating, seeing yourself becoming healthy, seeing your cells healing. And so when you change the picture with your visualization, you're going to change your outcomes. And, and so if you were to say, okay, I'm going to move myself from that one chair in my visualization, and I'm going to change my, my visualization. I'm going to sit closer to the water's edge, mm. and I'm going to see my feet get wet with the, water, with the water as the little waves come in. I'm going to hear the pebbles making beautiful sounds, and I'm going to just feel my body relaxing as the ocean is cleaning and cleansing my body, and I feel so relaxed and cleansed. You're going to have a different experience with that. Okay, so back to the core tricks. What are they? Without giving too much away, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so, there are, 
there's something called NLP, which is yeah, Neuro Linguistic Programming. programming. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I also utilize those tricks. Right. And the reason being is because I have found through my practice that not everybody learns the same way. So when I do certain things, if you're a visual learner, you're not going to see things maybe when I'm speaking to you. If you're auditory and I show you a picture, you're not going to learn it either. Mm -hmm. And if you're kinesthetic, you need to do something physical. Yes. So what I've learned through my practice, and I've been practicing uh, 15 years now, is that I do all three techniques. Right. So I will do visualization, I will do auditory, and then I do kinesthetic, which is the NLP. So I'll show you something called the fist trick, or I'll, I'll have you put your three fingers together. And what I do is I anchor good thoughts with that. So when you have a good thought and you put your fingers together or you touch your knuckles or it doesn't matter what you do, it could be a rock, it could be anything that we want to anchor it with. Okay. When you, when you touch that, your mind and your body starts relaxing because it's already anchored and associated. So it's uh, okay. association, isn't it? Correct. Yep. Yeah. Definitely. As this is fascinating. There are, there are plenty of books out there offering help to give up smoking. What makes your book different from the others available? Well, it's me. and uh, <laughs> <laughs> She says modestly. <laughs> <laughs> and my cheery personality. Well, um, I do offer in the back of the book, there's a special code that you can get a free hypnosis recording. But I also really wanted to make sure that I was able to really reach out and help as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. So I have about, um, I have three different scripts in the book that will help you to relax. I have, I think, 20-something techniques, over 20, um, that will help you to, in any kind of situation, whether you're out with your friends drinking having your cup of coffee in the car. So what I did was I really said, okay, what is everybody's different situations? And I started to go through my client's list mm. because when I take notes and I said, okay, many people smoke in the car, many people with coffee, but here's some people that have problems with work. Mm. Let's do that. So I really investigated my past clients, their success rates, what worked with them, and I put it into the book. What do you say to the person that says, it's too late for me to give up smoking, I'm too old? I tell them that my oldest client was 76 years old, and he was a two-and-a-half-packer day, Ooh, yeah. started, to, started <laughs> to get COPD, and decided that he wanted to live at least another 10 to 12 years mm. to see his grandchildren get married. Oh. And if he can do it, you can do it. Lastly, where can people purchase Quit Smoking Without Gaining Weight? On Amazon.com. It's there. Mm -hmm. uh, and I believe it's also um, on Goodreads because we did ask for it to, you know, we, we put it on there and I would have to double check. But I, I know it's definitely on Amazon.com. Well, lovely. Thank you, Kathy. That was really interesting. Please come back on Book Talk Radio Club again. I'd love to chat with you and hear more. In the meantime... Good luck for the future. And thank you, everyone, for listening to Book Talk Radio Club. Thank you very much, Kathy. Thank you so much, Claire, and you have a wonderful day. Thank you.